Hey guys, how's it going? Why am I laughing? Um, I really don't know why. Does it really matter? <laughs> Not really at this point. Uh, hold on. Okay, sorry, my friend Sherry was texting me. Um, anyway, I came in here because it is Sunday and I am getting ready to obviously do my workout. It is a gorgeous day. I also want to say, <laughs> for the record, I've told you guys, I live in a land of strange, at the moment, until I move, I live in a very strange world. <laughs> I live above mutant freak neighbors below me that have a dog from hell and a child that I really believe was formed on another planet with lungs that can really reach as far as a noise uh, decibel. I, I think they could pierce like steel walls. I, I think they could pierce Fort Knox. Uh, that's my mom. Anyway, the other person that's very strange is the people that live over this way, okay? I'm just trying to see if they're out on their porch. I'm telling you, the, the people in this house are never home, ever, they're never home. They're home like, I'd say maybe three to four times out of the month I see somebody over there. And it's one guy and two wives. Now, I haven't been able to confirm if they're wives, but it's one guy and two women whenever they're home. And then like every one out of maybe four times that I see them, there's a child with them. They only speak French and they are just bizarre because there's so many things that are bizarre about these people. Number one, it appears that, so, okay, my the back of my house <laughs> faces like the side of their house, and when they are in their um, living room, they have this light, and they have no curtains in any of, in any of their rooms. So when they're there, and I, like, maybe in the summer, and I want to go sit out on my deck, if they're in their family room late at night, and they have this light on, literally, it's like, the government is, is in a helicopter, you know, and they have those huge, when they're trying to find a criminal, like huge beacons of light shining down. That's what the lights in their house are like. So that's weird thing number, number two. So number one, they're never home other than maybe three to four times a month. And then it's always one guy who looks like he's about five, seven, um, real small guy, but yet I, this shocked me one time because I looked over there and the bright lights were on and you can see everything. You can see in their kitchen, you can see whatever. And this guy had his shirt off and he's like ripped. I mean like Hugh Jackman in a size 5'7", a size 5'7 man, ripped. I was like, imagine like the most nerdy guy you can possibly imagine that you'd never expect to be like chiseled. And I was like, this was probably me. Okay, so that's... Weird fact number three. Weird fact number four is um, they always have, you know, like I said, the one guy, same two women. One has short dark hair, one has short red hair. And then I'll always see them out on their deck and it's him sitting down, some sort of short man who only speaks French with his two wives and they kind of sit down and serve him. You know, they'll eat on their deck a lot and it's like they're both serving him. And then he's built this like little area down in the, in the grass area. So they have a nice, beautiful deck. And then he's built an entirely separate deck down the stairs out in the back of the yard by the trees where they have the grill. And so then they'll go out there and, I mean, like, I'm probably thinking about this way too much, but like why, most people have the grill on their deck and then they're flipping the grill, right? Flipping the grill, move on over and sit down at the deck. Instead, he's created a special area out back, a special second deck where they grill and then they'll sit, he and his two wives and maybe, you know, another couple with other two wives. And then they'll sit down and they'll have like a little outdoor in the middle of the lawn get together. So bizarre. I say this because they were out there this morning and I walked outside and like the three of them were like, oh, baby, you're baby, I'm like, whatever. They probably realize that when I'm out there, I act like I'm on my phone and I take pictures and I send it to Danielle and I talk about them. Just like I did for four minutes right here. Happy Sunday. Why am I drinking out of my smart water bottle instead of my Brita Challenge stuff? Because I bought this at yoga and I'm finishing it. So, the other thing is, um, I had a frustrating night last night and I came to this realization. 
not like this is an earth shattering realization, but frankly, you guys, I just kind of looked back on this week and the same thing again. I had, let's see, what did I do? I think I had three or four workouts instead of six. And I'm kind of like feeling, you know, I'd lost two pounds, but I'm kind of feeling like I'm looking in the mirror and, you know, I was letting my brain go wild with no matter what I do, I stay exactly the same weight. Like it's, it's really bizarre, you guys. I don't ever gain weight. I just stay exactly the same. But you know, my whole point is I'm trying to lose 20 pounds. I'm trying to get back to my ideal weight. So it's very frustrating that to me in my head, it seems like no matter what I do, whether, whether I'm traveling, whether I'm eating great, eating, you know, like this past two weeks, I have been eating really fantastic. No processed foods, kind of, I mean, really staying on the money as far as getting protein in, getting my, um, my macros and so on and so forth. But like, and, and here, I know I'm being impatient, but then I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if I look back to like right before I quit my job and I was traveling and whatever and I come home every week and I'm like, oh man, I so didn't do well and look what I ate this time and I had that, you know, a couple of muffins in the airport and I had pizza pizza and wow, I ate much worse this past week than I thought. And, and I'm thinking back to like all of those times when I wasn't really focused at all. I wanted to be focused, but I wasn't. And yet not gaining weight, you know, I don't gain weight. I just stay exactly the same. And so Sherry and I were texting last night and I was really down. And I think I was more down because I'm like, I've so been here before. I've so been at the same place, bitching about the same thing for, you know, longer than a year. You know, this was my year that I said, I'm looking back on the past two years and leaving it behind and I've made so much progress, but still you guys, it's frustrating. Sometimes I feel, seriously, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that has as much desire to do this and puts as much effort now, there, there's a caveat there. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And yet, I don't feel like I have results, okay? I just, it's very, very frustrating. And I got really, really frustrated last night. And I just started to realize, like, Sherry and I were texting back and forth. And God love you, Sherry. I mean, Sherry has been my blogger friend for, golly, probably 10, 12 years. We've never hung out in person, but we're always, you know, coaching each other and encouraging each other on our water, on our diets, on our workouts. And, you know, I realized that probably there's, there's a couple of big pieces to this. You've got to be right on your diet. That's so important. You've got to be right on your workouts. And really, I said this earlier this year, realistically, because I've so let work get in the way before I quit my job and now even recently after quitting my job, um, this is really, you know, when I compare now versus when I... It was, I don't want to say it was ever effortless for me to lose weight and stay lean. Um, it was always a concerted effort, but it just, I was, I was in a groove before I had a system down and I didn't deviate from it. I think the overwhelming difference is back then I wasn't putting so much like overwhelming stress and anxiety and focus on doing, you know, accomplishing the whole world overnight. As far as work, I had jobs that I loved. I had great bosses, um, and I, I did my job. I loved it, but there wasn't this overwhelming sense of, um, I don't know, pressure. Whether it's pressure from myself or pressure, um, you know, from a boss or work or unemployment or, or whatever, it was just this was my life and I, I enjoyed so much. There's so much that has happened the past several years in my life with, you know, getting divorced and then, um, you know, finally getting a job and then losing my job, being unemployed for 14 months, having a whole bunch of, you know, um, family drama, lawsuit drama, um, getting a new job, having a job for two years that was a challenge. Those of you that know me know what I'm talking about. A lot of stress. Um, you know, and, and, and wanting to make changes and then finally making changes and quitting my job. And, and, you know, this business is amazing. I mean, I've never been in this place, but it's huge. It's a huge, I cannot even describe to you guys. And I'm not saying this to make you feel sorry for me. It's a huge world. Like I have the weight of two worlds on my shoulders right now because I've gone from being in a job where you'd perform a certain amount of stuff for one boss and then you 
potentially can, you know, leave it to this is my thing and it's growing so fast and wow, that's awesome. Every single decision, everything I have to be involved in because if people want to have a question and they need to know where to go, I have to make that decision. I've got, you know, there's things that I want to say, oh, I just want to walk away and I want to take a break. If I don't do it, you know, that's that much longer until we get to certain measurable, you know, points that we need to get to and so on. So the pressure um, and the pressure that I'm putting on myself is huge. And that, you guys, that is like whether it's been what I'm doing now or the, the job where I worked before over the past couple of years, the big thing that has I've allowed to get in my way is just this overwhelming pressure, I think, to, and I don't even know, I'm still figuring it out. Like, what am I trying to do? Am I trying to, um, you know, accomplish, you know, reach the top of the mountain in two days when realistically it's gonna take, you know, seven months? I don't know. All I know is that the big picture of what's gotten in the way of me reaching my goals is work and too much pressure that I'm putting on myself and that's when I let things get in the way. I don't get in my workouts on a weekly basis because I let work come first. Even when I'm here in my house and I have control of my schedule, that's ridiculous. The number one thing that I have to do if I'm going to change my results and get what I want to get is period. Period. There's a, there's only so many hours in the day. You got to take if you're going to make like a pie chart, right? You got to take your day and say, what do I want to fit into every day? Because if I'm not going to go crazy and burn out, there's certain things I want in my day, and I've got to chisel out a fourth of my day or whatever those hours are, and allocate that to my workouts. Because otherwise, if I don't get back in that habit and get back in the habit of like being okay, leaving my to-do list, which is like this long. I'm never going to make any progress. You guys, that, that phrase that I love, to get what you, you've never had, you have to do what you've never done, really, that's so true for all of us. If you don't like your results, I've been saying this for several years, then you haven't done something. Do something differently. And what am I not doing differently? I haven't done this differently for a couple years now. I, I have all the desire to do this in my head, but if I don't make changes in my daily schedule, I'm gonna have I'm gonna keep having weeks like I have for the past three weeks. I'm sure if you guys watch my vlogs for the past three three weeks, maybe even four weeks, I've gotten on here and gone, oh God, this week was bad. It was blah blah blah. This this reason, this reason, this reason, and I only got three workouts in. This reason, this reason, this reason. Oh, I only did two. This reason, oh I was sick, you know? It didn't used to be, and, and these aren't overwhelming things, you guys. These aren't overwhelming like, oh, my leg fell off and that's why I couldn't work. Or, oh, I had mono and I couldn't even keep ice chips down. These are not that big of a deal, okay? Now, this is, it's, it's time, and I, I talked to Sherry and I said, you know what? There's something, remember what I told you guys before? When I used to, um, in my old house, I had a calendar that right when I walked into my closet, it, it was like a visual calendar, and I still have it, but because I'm such a neat freak, it's behind the door in my office, and I don't see it as much. And that was like my visual reminder. Every day when I would go to get dressed, I would see that visual reminder, and I would know, okay, this is how many workouts I've done this week. What's been happening now is I'm not looking at that, I'm not recording it, and in my head, I think I'm okay, and then, you know, one day I'll go by, and, and, and I'll think, oh, well, it was just, there was no way I could do my workout today. And it's not that I don't want to, guys. You know I love this. I'm justifying it because work is so important and I've got to make this happen. Guess what? God brought me here. He's put all of these things together. It is more overwhelmingly coming together than I can possibly imagine. I need to chill out and stop trying to control everything and chill out and get my stuff done. And if it means that I have to put up a little thing on my refrigerator, which I'm going to do, I'm going to put up a sheet there every day that says, have you done this? Have you gotten your meals in? Are you going five hours without eating and then shoving down, you know, some, some tuna fish because you're in a rush and then hurrying back to your office? And then, oh, you try to do a workout like the other day. I try to do a workout. Oh crap, I forgot a one o'clock appointment. And so then I rush and I'm only doing 45 minutes and all I did was cardio and I'm not getting my strength training in. This is not a way to live. I'm building a company based on fitness. This is absurd. And again, when I say that, 
Part of it, yeah. Part of it is that I, I'm building a company based on fitness and being healthy, and I want to walk the walk. I don't want to be that person that is like talking about everybody else kicking butt and reaching their goals, and I'm the only one that can't. I'm the only one that's like, oh, I can't find time because of work. When here I am like commending people and making them ambassadors because they are finding time. I love working out. I have to get this back. And I just, I realize what it is there, what it is that's going to take for me to get it out from up, up here into like, oh yeah, I want to do this. This is what I need to do. You've got to sometimes just take stupid little things, whether it's a note on your refrigerator or, you know, laying your clothes out the night before and not putting them away unless you've done a workout, something like that, because life gets in the way. And if you don't, if you don't grab it by the, what's the word I'm saying? I don't want to say grab it by the balls. That's a bad, it's like grab the bull by the horns. Yeah, that's, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. You've got to take control and I'm just, I'm tired of whining. I'm tired of hoping. I'm tired of, you know, sitting back and, and getting frustrated. And then when I get frustrated, I look at what I'm doing and I'm like, you got no one else to blame but yourself, Kelly. And honestly, I'm sharing this blabbering on vlog with you guys because I know a lot of you are in the same place. Um, at the end of the day, I'd say nine out of 10 of us that haven't reached our goals yet, it's definitely something that we can fix. And with me, it's definitely something. And that's appalling. That's appalling, people. If you get to the end of your year and you're like, yeah, I bitched and moaned and talked about it all year, round, all, all year long, but I didn't put the pieces together and change it. I am so freaking over that. All I'm gonna say, figure out something. Figure out what it is that you're doing every day, every week, that's getting in your way and you gotta find a way to, 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 to fix it. Whatever it is that's going to work for you, if you have somebody call you and wake you up in the morning so you go do your training, if you put something up on your refrigerator so that you're accountable to yourself, do something that's going to change the pace because otherwise, another week goes by, another week becomes two weeks, and another two weeks becomes three weeks, and then you have a month, and then you're like, shit. And then another month becomes a quarter, and you're looking back. This is how easy it is to get completely out of control, and it's very easy I'm going to say it's simple. I don't want to say it's easy. It's simple to get it back. Do whatever steps you have to take. I know I'm doing it because I just don't want to be that person that is another year from now still complaining and going, still trying to lose 10 or 15 pounds. Uh-uh. Talk is cheap, people. Walk the walk. I'm going to do it.